On this week's episode of Facts of Fishing, Dave attempts a belly boat bass beatdown. Going fishing on Lake El Diablo. This story, my friend, is about to be written. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, what a beast. Moments like this, I wish it was a fly angler. No, not really. I'm Dave Mercer, pro angler and all round fishing big mouth. Today, I've got one day on one body of water and I am surrounded by cameras. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, they're gonna show you everything that happens. And I mean everything. Son of a... Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, conquer water. Live Target Lures, Jackal, Eat, Sleep, Jackal, and Rigid Industries LED Lighting, Torture Tested, Angler Approved. Without further ado, here he is, I can't say this. Just read the script. The world's greatest angler, Dave Mercer. Early each day as the majestic glow of the morning sun begins to dance across aquatic playgrounds all over the world. Millions of individuals wake up at ungodly hours to partake in the one task that drives them all week long. They are anglers. Now some anglers choose to fish from shore, some wade, while others use a boat. But then there is another group. This group just seems to want to be different. Maybe because they like it better that way. Or maybe because they're just not smart enough to know any better. These are the belly boaters. And today, Dave thinks he is one of them. <laughs> now this ought to be good. Going fishing on Lake El Diablo. Many tales have been told about El Diablo. But this story, my friend, is about to be written. Old El Diablo! Oh, oh, big one, too, I can see him! Oh, man, that was a big fish. Throw my bait, broke my heart. Seen that happen a time or two at Old El Diablo. Just when you think you've got that girl figured out, El Diablo strikes back. Soulless devil beast is that lake. Sure, you've seen shows for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. Not this show. This is the El Diablo show. There we go. Got him. <laughs> Easy, dude. You are not near big enough to give me such a hard time. Old Del Diablo Bass. Junior. See ya. El Diablo, my friends, is the whole reason that Waldo's hiding. Don't want no piece of El Diablo. There we go. Come here, dude. <laughs> oh. Easy. Did not face the fears of El Diablo to catch you. I want your big brother. I'll go. Oh, bigger fish. That's a big one. Come here, El Diablo. El Diablo! <laughs> Look at that dude right there. Absolutely inhaled that cover craw. Perfect bait for this situation. Mm. Sexy, sexy El Diablo bass. See ya. A whole different perspective once you get low to the water. It's like one-on-one -on -one combat with the bass. Here comes a fish on this cast. I sense it. My El Diablo senses tingling. Whoa! He grabbed it. Oh, go. Another one. 
Oh, that little shelf is loaded with fish. Come here, Junior. Little dude. See ya. Another one. Come here. Oh, this dude is taking me for a ride. What would you throw up? Puked all over my feet. I need one of those little bamboo fishing nets the fly fishermen use. Go on, get. You know, one of the most important keys with this kind of fishing is leverage and getting the right leverage. And one of the best things you can do, uh, people spend a lot of time wondering, you know, what length of rod they want to use for a specific technique. And that's the right approach. But when you're doing this style of fishing, you have to take in not just what a technique you're going to be fishing, but also what platform you're going to be fishing out of. Uh, you know, fishing on a little cover crawl like this, I could fish it on a, you know, a six and a half foot rod, something short and nimble. But when you're in a belly boat like this, it is really, really important to turn the odds in your favor. And one way you can do that, plain and simple, is use a longer rod. I would never, ever recommend a rod shorter than seven feet for this style of fishing. And a lot of people will think, oh, I want a short, nimble rod because I'm going to be confined for space. But that extra length of that rod is going to give me more leverage to get on top of those fish when they grab that bait. Like that one. Oh, I missed them. Talking when I should have been fishing. Hold on, let me get rigged. If you can't get the leverage on the fish, there is no way you're going to catch them. So simple little things like choosing the right length of rod is going to turn the odds in your favor. There we go. Come here. Oh, it's a good one too. <laughs> that is a good bass. <laughs> that dude right there absolutely annihilated that bait. I don't care whether you fish out of a belly boat or a bass boat. Mm, I will take it. Absolutely creamed that little eye shad. Mm. See ya. There we go. Smoked it. <laughs> oh. Gonzo. You know, I absolutely hate losing fish, but the thing to remember when you're losing fish, you're losing fish, so it's really not that bad. At least you're catching them. And catching them in these back lake gems. It's generally not the problem. The hard part is getting to them. Fish, good one too. They are stacked up on that shoal. See ya. There we go. God. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Wow, that is a good fish right there. Oh, look at that dude. That's the kind of dude that is loaded in these back lakes. There's tons and tons of them, and they're up on these rock shelves, munching and munching in bunches. Awesome, awesome critter. And the cool thing is, they hardly get any pressure because nobody comes back here. See you later. Every single one of these fish has come off this rock shelf and they're up there and they're up there for one reason and one reason only and that is to munch. You know, that's the age old question in fishing. You hear a lot of people say, well, do you like to fish shallow? Do you like to fish deep? I mean, there's fish that live both shallow and deep. But the one thing I'll tell you about the shallow fish is generally, if a fish is shallow, it's there for one reason and that is to eat. And these fish today, they're munching. Come here, dude. Inhaled it. Dom's all right down his yap. See ya. No, big one. That's a big one. What we got? No, that is not a fish. That is a big one. I did not say it was a fish ever. I said it was a big one. If you listen clearly to the statement, rewind the tape. No, big one. That's a big one. See, big one. I mean, that right there, 
is a world-class stick roll. I don't care who you are. You know, other fishing shows, they won't show you this stuff. You know why? Because they have pride. I do not have that. That's the reason I am floating around in a barca lounger and catching stick roll on national television. Here's another one. Another one. Oof. If I can get a hold of my rod, this feels like a good one. Yeah, it is. It doesn't just feel like a good one. It is a good one. There is a whack of these fish. And, I mean, that is not a super tanker. At no time am I going to tell you, I mean, that's a Lake Erie class fish. But, dude, we're out here literally for less than an hour. And this is nothing short of a whack fest. You know, one of the biggest challenges with this style of fishing is going to be depicting the lake, like picking apart the lake and finding the real structure and where those fish are holding. I mean, I'm spoiled. Generally, I'm in my bass boat, and even if I'm in deep water, I can use my electronics to show me what's below the boat. And if I'm in shallow water, I've got that platform where I can see all those shoals and all those rock piles and any bit of structure that those fish are gonna be living in. Well, when I'm low to the water, obviously, my belly boat did not come equipped with any electronics. It now becomes challenging. Something that you wanna do is when you come to one of these back lakes, do a hot lap of it. Whether it's something you can walk around or you have to kick your way around, just do that, do a hot lap and figure out where all this different type of structure is. Cause then when you start catching them in one particular structure, you know I can go over to that point and there's another rock shelf. Or I can go down there and there's another rock shelf. They're all coming off these rock outcroppings today. And by doing a hot lap and figuring out where they are, it's just gonna cut down on your no fish catching time. I'm gonna catch fish right here, I sense it. Oh, gotcha. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one right there. <laughs> Calm down. Easy now, Bazilla. What a beast. I love it. The whole deal with an eye shad is basically you just cast it out and you retrieve it back to the boat. You're crawling it across the bottom here today, but you don't want to do a lot with it. I mean, you'll see some people when they see a jig style bait, right away they figure they got to, you know, pop it and rip it and twitch it. And I don't care where you're fishing, you don't see minnows swimming through the water like this. So don't let your bait swim through the water like that. I mean, just slowly creep it along and that's the whole deal behind the eye shad and eye motion baits. The whole deal is there's very little movement and action. Oh, fish eat it. You just gotta catch them. Unlike what I just did right there. Stole my bait. The very, very subtle hit. You're not gonna feel a big poop because there's no what I call triggering effect. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're fishing a jerk bait or something like that, there's a triggering effect. I mean, that bait's jerking side to side and it looks like it's fleeing or getting away from the fish. This bait right here just looks natural and real just because it slowly just saunters back to the boat. There he is. I didn't miss you that time, dude. There's another good one. Hammered that little jackal eye shad. Oh, whew. And when you see how deep they take that bait, you realize just how much they want it. Wow, this is awesome. It's moments like this, I wish I was a fly angler. No, not really. But I would love a muddler minnow right about now. When I don't get out of this float tube soon, I may drop a muddler minnow in here. There we go. That's a better one. That's a better one right there. Oh, easy. <laughs> it's not often you have to avoid your feet when fighting a fish. But dude almost swam right between my legs. Mm. Awesome. It's right in the yappa. Get out of here. All those little lakes you drive past, no matter where you're traveling from or to, and you're like, I wonder if there's fish there. And the answer is officially yes. Oh, I missed them. Come on back. You know, one of the whole deals fishing out of a belly boat or 
a kayak or anything that limits your availability to move around, it actually in a lot of ways makes you a better angler. What I mean by that is you're stuck in that zone. So you're gonna figure out how to catch them. I mean, you get out here in a high performance bass boat where you can run from one end of the lake to the other and you're gonna give up on an area a lot quicker. Throw your butt in a belly boat and you're gonna figure out how to catch them in that area. Ultimately, probably making you a little bit better. There we go. Gotcha. Smokey. <laughs> Get over here. The belly boat beat down. See ya. Talked a lot about leverage today and how important it is for you to get leverage on these fish yeah. because you're losing any advantage that you would have fishing from the shore or from a boat because you don't, you're not raised above the water. I mean, basically you're level with them. A longer rod helps you there, but another thing you can do when you're in a belly boat and you're low to the water is throw braided line. It's got no stretch to it. I've got Power Pro Super Slick on here and every single time I feel that little tonk. Braided line is gonna give you a lot more direct power and chances to bury that hook home. If you've got stretch for mono, it's gonna be a lot tougher. There we go. He's got it. There's another one following it. Oh, come here. <laughs> I mean, that is not a giant, but look how that dude ate that deal right there. When they inhale your bait like that, you know. They want it. See ya. Whew. My hands are getting tired. Everyone all together. Come on, viewers at home. Not so much you nor you, but you right there. Say it. Mwah. The trials and tribulations of my life. It's not always easy. Gratuitous amounts of fish. Belly boating my way around. Under pressured fisheries. What do you want me to do? Post office wasn't hired. I mean, I need a job. I gotta work. Evidently, the fishing is pretty good at La Reserve Beauchene because even Dave can catch fish there. If you want a fishing trip of a lifetime, contact La Reserve Beauchene at Beauchene.com. Brought to you by Rigid Industries LED Lighting, makers of the UV Black Light Kit. Torture tested, angler approved. There's another one. Come here, dude. Little dude. Nice one, huh? Face, face that. In old sunshine when she's gone. Doom, doom. Old in darkness when she's gone. There we go. Oh, I'm here. Easy triple lutz. He's gonna jump in. Jump in. I dare you to. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, oh. oh. It's a big one. Don't go. Oh, I gotcha. Smoke. Mm. Mm. Sexy, sexy night. And that's a pretty sexy fish. As the sun drops on El Diablo, the insects become ornery. <laughs> Bugs are all over me. I feel like a moose in the woods. Come on. Running from the bugs. Oh. Broke off. Thrill of victory and the agony of anger. Today I've learned 
some very valuable lessons. I mean, number one, I've got broken fins, so I'm basically fishing version of Nemo. But two very valuable lessons. Number one, belly boat bassin is pretty fun. Number two, up until just the last hour, I had no idea why they could call such an angelic place El Diablo. I'm quickly learning why they chose the name El Diablo for this sacred ground. It's got nothing to do with the fish, the water. It's the insects. That's all right, El Diablo. I am prepared for you, my friend. I came loaded for bass. All right, the show's over. You guys gonna come pick me up, really? I mean, I, I'm sure if, come on, pick me up. Pro, spent the whole day in El Diablo. Help a brother out. I mean, people don't understand the trials and tribulations of my life. I mean, I've been out here all day, kicking away. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be pro anglers. Home, Jeeves. I'm exhausted. Dave fished for six hours and 26 minutes, made 477 casts, and managed to catch 20 fish. However, let's be honest. The most shocking thing about this show is that somehow this buffoon avoided hooking the inner tube and sinking the dang ship. And that's the score. Now it's time for the facts. Dave started off the day catching his fish on a 3-inch jackal cover craw, rigged weightless and backwards on a 3-aught trocar finesse worm hook, then switched it up to a 4.8-inch jackal eye shad fished on an 8-ounce jackal nose jig head. Both of these baits were fished on a medium-action 7-foot-1-inch Shimano Camaro rod paired with a Shimano Stella C3000 and spooled up with 15-pound Timber Brown Power Pro Super Slick with a 10-pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's the fact.